Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black and green or Sultai colored food deck nicknamed Salty Food. This deck was voted on by my supporters on Patreon, so make sure to check it out so you can cast your vote and decide which deck makes it into a YouTube video. And this food deck features a ton of new cards from Wilds of Eldrain. At one mana we've got one of the few non-Eldrain cards. Teething Wormlet is a 1-1, saying whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control we gain one life. And if it's the first time this ability resolved this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on a Teething Wormlet so it can steadily grow over time as we keep making more and more food tokens. And Teething Wormlet also has a death touch as long as we control three or more artifacts, which is often the case. Then we also have four copies of Candy Trail, which is an artifact with a food subtype, so it does contribute towards some of our food synergies, and when it enters the battlefield we scry too, so that can help find some of those food payoff cards, and at any point we can sacrifice it like any food to gain three life, but because it's also a clue it will also draw us a card, so that's pretty nice. Then at 2 mana we've got 4 copies of Elvish Archivist, an 0-1, saying whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Archivist, only triggers once each turn, and whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we draw a card, also only triggers once each turn. Of course our deck very good at making artifacts, but our deck also has 8 enchantments, so between our Welcome to Sweet Tooth and Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, we can also draw a few extra cards with the Elvish Archivist. And also important to keep in mind, even though it only triggers once each turn, we can potentially enable Archivist and Wormlet during the opponent's turn, thanks to our instant speed food maker Gumdrop Poisoner for a single black can tempt with treats and create a food token. So keeping that instant during the opponent's turn can sometimes make a pretty big difference if we can generate two more plus one counters in a turn cycle or get an extra plus one counter with a Wormlet, potentially even giving it a death touch at instant speed. And then once we eventually cast the Poisoner out of exile, it's a 3-2 with a lifelink, and when it enters a battlefield, up to one target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life we gained this turn. So Poisoner is very good at multiples, also synergizes with Wormlet gaining us extra life, and then at some point we can also just sacrifice a food token to gain three, and that can also set up a Poisoner to kill an opposing creature. And then we also have four copies of Tough Cookie, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature Food Golem, so it does have that food subtype, and when it enters the battlefield, create a food token. So we essentially get two food for just two mana, which is a pretty good deal. And then for two and a green, target non-creature artifact we control becomes a 4-4 artifact creature until end of turn. So Tough Cookie can weaponize those food tokens now and potentially threaten lethal all by itself. So this shines against control strategies where we don't need to overextend by playing a bunch of creatures into a board wipe. Just a Tough Cookie and a few food tokens is enough to force the opponent to clear the board. And then of course we can also sacrifice Tough Cookie to gain life like any other food token. Then there's a Welcome to Sweet Tooth, a 2-mana Saga, that starts out by making a 1-1 token. Then we create a food and eventually put X plus one plus one counters on the target creature we control, where X is 1 plus the number of foods we control. So that also counts our Candy Trail and our Tough Cookie, which can quickly add up, so this can represent a lot of extra damage. Then we've got the Goose Mother, which can be played for X equals zero, in which case it's just a 2-2 flyer, doesn't make any food when it enters, but when it attacks we can potentially sacrifice a food to draw a card, but the Goose Mother is a lot more exciting if we can sink a bunch of mana into it, even just X equals one will generate a food when it enters, and then Goose Mother also picks up an extra plus one plus one counter. And then the Goose Mother is quite nice in combination with a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, a 4-mana enchantment, when it enters create a food token, so this is great alongside Archivist, triggering both of its abilities at once. And then all foods we control can tap to add green mana, so that also includes the food token we just generated, and because it's an artifact it doesn't really suffer from summoning sickness like other creatures would, so it can immediately tap for green mana and maybe cast something else after playing Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, leading to some very mana efficient turns. Of course we might be limited to only green mana, but there's plenty of cheap green spells and colorless spells we can cast using that mana. We can also use the mana to maybe sack another food token to gain some life if we're in a pinch. And then eventually for 7 mana we can sacrifice Knight of the Sweet's Revenge itself, and then creatures we control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of foods we control. So that can be a nice overrun effect to try and close out the game. So that can also be a very nice win condition. But of course, ideally we can play Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, build up a lot of mana, and then cast a huge Goose Mother, generating half of X food tokens, which can keep us drawing more cards and enabling other synergies. 
and then two copies of Greta, Sweet Tooth, Scourge, which enters the battlefield generating a food token, and then we can sacrifice a food for one on a black to draw a card at the cost of one life, or we can sack a food to give us a plus one plus one counter, although that we can only activate as a sorcery. So plenty of food synergies to go around, and then we also have two copies of Go for the Throat as a bit of spot removal, especially nice at dealing with an opposing Shieldred, which can punish us for drawing cards of our Goose Mother, or Granta, and our Archivist. So Shieldred can be pretty effective against us, but there's a few ways to deal with it besides Go for the Throat. We can also maybe take it out with a Poisoner if we gained enough life in that turn. And then our mana base also has a very important addition, three copies of a Restless Cottage, which can turn into a 4-4 creature, and when it attacks we not only exile a card from a graveyard, but we also generate a food token, so that can also potentially help grow our Archivist if we haven't played an artifact yet in that turn, and enable some of our other synergies. And then our mana base has lots of dual lands, a bit tricky to build since we want a good balance of untapped lands while still having all our colors, only really splashing blue for the Goose Mother. Other one drops you could consider in this deck include the Stalwart, which could maybe tap a food token to make a mana, so that can be a nice mana creature. Could also play Ginger Brute as another one mana food creature that has a ton of synergy throughout, but I've been pretty happy with Candy Trail giving us that Scry 2 effect, and of course Wormlet, as you'll see in the games, is also very powerful. And then as the Channel Lands, Abandoned Mire and Boseju can offer us a tiny bit more interaction, not going for Soaring City since again blue is just a splash and it's going to be difficult to channel otherwise. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay we're on the play, our hand's a little slow to get going with two tapped lands but I'm still going to give it a shot. Start with Cottage, turn two can play a Candy Trail or Adventure the Poisoner. And I think I want to dig towards more lands, so we'll use this cry here. And those will do. It would have been nice to have an untapped land on turn two here. But I'll happily take two more. Okay, so next up, probably get Welcome to Sweet Tooth going. And then I can still make another food. And then next turn we can double spell Tough Cookie with another Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Opponent killing our 1-1. One -one. And then we can maybe wait until we sacrifice our Candy Trail to play a Poisoner in the same turn, give an opposing creature minus 3, minus 3. Alright, so hopefully we'll get to untap with one of our creatures so we can put some plus one counters on it. Although Sacred Fire takes out Tough Cookie. Okay, so we'll still get the plus one counters on the 1-1. One -one. And then what I can do is play Tough Cookie and animate one of my food tokens. Make sure we don't animate something with Summoning Sickness and hit for 11. So that hits pretty hard. Next turn we'll get even more plus one counters. We're just gonna take out our tough cookie here with the Duelist, which could also gain them some life. Okay, that's one huge token here, 1414, would be lethal. So now what we can do is sack Candy Trail, play Poisoner, and our opponent's dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a pretty nice hand. Turn 1 can play Wormlet, turn 2 Welcome to Sweet Tooth, and then follow it up with a bunch of Candy Trails perhaps. Could also play double candy trail turn two just so we get a plus one counter right away but getting this going so we get a plus one counters a turn sooner might be worth it opponent on blue black fairies so yeah resolving our key spell before they can take it away with a discard spell or counter it seems important and then next turn could also go for Candy Trail plus Sacrifice it. 
even though keeping food in play for the plus one counters could be worth it. And Dream Thief gets in for one. Opponent could have some fairies with flash as well. Archivist was a decent draw, so now I can go Archivist plus Candy Trail. And if they counter the Archivist, that's okay. Want to play our spells main phase one, because that way if our opponent does have a spell stutter, we know we can safely attack without worrying about any ambush creature. Fairy Mastermind, the most likely creature with flash they would play. But they could also have the 1-2 uh, flyer. And land and tough cookie are both decent. Land for Knight of the Sweet's Revenge might be worth it, although I think I prefer double spelling next turn, tough cookie plus candy trail. And then if our opponent does have a discard spell taking away or Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, then we can maybe scry lands to the bottom since we won't need land four. It's gonna be a sleep cursed fairy. And our opponent might be holding up a Spell Stutter here. For now, counters on the token. That's a 4-4. And then we'll see if Tough Cookie resolves. Could also go for Candy Trail first, I suppose. Although I doubt they would counter that. So Wormlet now has Death Touch. And uh, yeah, another Welcome to Sweet Tooth looks good. So I can attack first, or I can play another Tough Cookie in case I want to double lock Wormlet. I'll gain a bit more life first. Could also see them fire off a removal spell now. Ideally, we can keep two creatures in place, or Knight of the Sweet's Revenge is more effective. That opponent's got to go for the throat, unfortunately. But that does mean Tough Cookie resolves, which is awesome in combination with our Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. Opponent chumps. Okay. So a discard spell here could be effective still. But then we're just going to activate Tough Cookie next turn to animate some of our artifacts. And a 4-4 lines up pretty well against a 3-3 Sleep Cursed Fairy. And yeah, that's enough for a concession, just enough early pressure here to put the fairy deck in a tough spot. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. A couple ways we can sequence, but probably start with a tapped cottage. And then turn two, I can see myself playing Wormlets, plus make a food with Poisoner. Candy Trail also an option. But let's just go for the adventure. Since I'm not sure what I need to scry to the top or bottom with Candy Trail. If I draw fourth land, then we can scry future lands to the bottom. Opponent on Mono Black Aggro with Evolved Sleeper into Misery Shadow. Good curve. Now looks like a good turn for Tough Cookie. If I can wait one more turn on Gumdrop Poisoner. What we could do is play an artifact gaining life with Wormlet and then take out Evolved Sleeper. Although they might grow it in the meantime. Does mean I would have to save an artifact like Candy Trail in hand. So I can enable Wormlet into Poisoner. Otherwise we can wait until we have 5 mana to sack a food and give minus 3 with Poisoner. So either way, playing a tough cookie here seems fine. And then we'll attack, offering the trade for both creatures, which I don't think they'll accept. And then just pass. So next turn we have the option of Candy Trail plus Poisoner. Cut down on Tough Cookie. And they're gonna level up Sleeper. Alright, so the Poisoner line's not gonna work. Which means we potentially lost out on some mana efficiency last turn. But now we do get to trigger Wormlet again, and we found a backup Poisoner, that's not bad. So, this can pump up to a 3-3, that's not really an issue. Probably fine going Candy Trail plus Poisoner, and then keep the other Poisoner as kind of a surprise. And 
And a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge looks awesome. And then having the Life Linker in play will enable the second Poisoner quite nicely. And attack for four. So yeah, seeing some pretty nifty synergies in action. Opponent's got a Trespasser. But Misery Shadow, a bit of a nombo with Trespasser, exiling our creatures. And an all-out attack. So I'll definitely take it. And then... Can go for an attack, plus probably take out the Misery Shadow at this point, I want to say. Make Food Token to grow Wormlets. Attack, and then we'll be able to give minus four, minus four here. Opponent trades, which does make our Knight of the Sweet's Revenge a bit worse. And Misery Shadow down. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, the Teething Wormlet's a 5-5. Awesome one drop for the deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, Candy Trail. Unless we want to adventure the Poisoner, so I can potentially play it turn three. Although it's probably going to be better to wait on it. So... I'll just Candy Trail, see if we can find some nice payoff cards, such as a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. Poison are also good in multiples. So what do we make of that? Keep Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, but then I also still need a fourth land to cast it. So maybe Poisoner afterwards is too greedy. Welcome to Sweet Tooth. I can also easily play after playing or enchantment. Opponent on blue white soldiers. Okay. Could also adventure Poisoner, and then next turn play it just as a good blocker early on that can gain some life back. And then I can go Knight of the Sweet's Revenge plus double Welcome to Sweet Tooth, hopefully. Although, let's see, I guess I would have two food tokens in play, make a third, so I would still be one short of also playing Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So I'll just play one right now. And get the plus one counters going. Brutal Cathar can be a good answer to our human token. So we'll see what we draw next turn. Could also decide to sacrifice Candy Trail to try and find a fourth land. And then I can still adventure the Poisoner. Would be nice to play this after having gained some life, but we'll see. Thalia could also be effective against our deck. And yep, speak of the devil. So that's going to slow things down significantly. Don't really want to trade. We've got the fourth land, but now we might need five. So I think we wait on Poisoner until we can potentially sack a food token and play it. And then for now another Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So we have another creature to put plus one counters onto. In case they remove one with Brutal Cathar. It's going to be a Sky Strike to draw extra cards. Also very powerful. And Goose Mother was a nice draw. So we will get a pretty large token here, which can start attacking. And then I can play Goose Mother X equals 2. And that can help draw extra cards. And then next turn we can maybe look into Gumdrop Poisoner, killing a Sky Strike Officer even, if we've got a fifth land. So we'll have a total of five food, which means six plus one counters next turn from our Welcome to Sweet Tooth. That adds up. So if they can't answer Goose Mother, it can kill them in just two attacks. But it's got a Denik, that's fine. And another frontliner. Okay, so no answer to the Goose Mother, although they do have two legendaries, so if they 
have an Iganjo in hand, they could channel it for a single white. So maybe that's what they're setting up. Although if we put plus one counter on Goose Mother, then we're still good to go. Might not have a great attack on the ground into the first ranking Thalia combined with four damage, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, we found our unsamped land, so that's perfect. So where to put the plus one counters? I think Goose Mother is still pretty reasonable. And this turn I could play Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, which means I've pretty much infinite mana going into the next turn, so it's going to be trivial to play and adventure the Poisoner. And then I can also threaten to pump the team a bunch. So let's attack with the Goose Mother. Sack of food to draw. And then I can still potentially sacrifice Candy Trail using other food tokens for mana, but don't know if that's going to be necessary. Bone's going to go digging. And takes nine. Okay, big turn coming up. Bone's going to Harbin, so that can give their team plus one plus one and flying. Is that enough for lethal? In which case I'll have to sack Candy Trail to gain some life. So it's not quite lethal, so I can take it for now. Putting back up to 9, so Goose Mother is still lethal. And another Danik I don't mind, so yeah, if we can clear Harbin, we should have a lethal attack lined up. And I can sack Candy Trail if I'd like. Another Goose Mother is not bad. So Adventure Poisoner. And make some mana. And gain three. And then Poisoner takes out Harbin. Attack for the win. Unless her opponent's got a Protection spell here for one mana. And that does it. Awesome. Blue White Soldiers, no match for our salty food. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Cottage into turn to Wormlets. And then we can use the Poisoners to make some food, grow the wormlets, and then a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge will unlock a lot of mana. Okay, put on to red-green. Could already go wormlets and put a plus one counter on it by adventuring the Poisoner, which is reasonable, although I would like to guarantee Knight of the Sweet's Revenge on turn four. I could then still play wormlet afterwards, even though we miss out on some plus one counters in the meantime. Yeah, maybe it's still fine to just Adventure Poisoner, play one next turn. And then the lifelink will make it easier to maybe kill a creature with a second Poisoner. And then I might just wait on Knight of the Sweet's Revenge for an extra turn. Opponent's kind of a beatdown deck with Beast Caller. Okay, so... Picked up an untapped land for turn four, which is nice. Let's just play Poisoner and pass. Don't really want to trade Wormlet since I think it's going to be better than a Beast Caller long term. And we also want something in play we can kill with our second Poisoner, potentially. Can essentially gain 4 life if we make a food and attack with our 3-2 lifelink. Beast Caller attacks, I'll take it. If they play a 4-4 Contaminator, that could line up pretty well here. Just a Kami's Flare, killing Poisoner. Okay, they might have a protection spell left here for a green mana, like a Tyvar's Stand. So maybe a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge is still better here. And then next turn we'll have plenty of mana to potentially sack a food token to gain some life and play Poisoner afterwards. And the Restless Cottage also a nice leftover. 
We have one in play already, so that can start attacking next turn. Partners, always powerful, but now our opponent is tapped out. And Poisoner can finish off the partners. Found another one. Alright, so let's count our mana. So I have essentially seven mana. Using the Adventure Eater is essentially free, because the artifact taps for mana right away. So we should have enough to sack a food token and play Poisoner. So let's go for it. And then I can still play a tamped cottage. Hit for four. And then save my food token for next turn so Wormlet picks up another counter. Not bad. There is still a 5-5 five, five Beast Caller we have to worry about. Now 6-6. Six, six. And we suspect a protection spell in the opponent's hand. And Lightning Strike just kills Poisoner, so... With a second Poisoner I can still clear Kodama at the very least. While the coast is clear, and an Archivist, not bad either. Okay, so I imagine we can play Archivists. Make a food. Growing Archivists and Wormlets. Sank a food. And play Poisoner, killing Kodama. All this life gain also helps us in the race. So we're still at 17. Attack for 5, and next turn I could sack Knight of the Sweet's Revenge for plus 2, plus 2 to the team. Oof, Goggle and Yidara is a good one. Especially now that we don't have Death Touch on the Wormlet anymore. They get to keep the 7-7. Seven, seven. And we'll see if they attack. Take 7. Okay, so we have a couple options. So if I animate Restless Cottage, attack with everyone, then Archivist will pick up two more counters from the food token being generated. And then opponent can block Cottage, take seven down to one. Do I have enough mana to activate both Cottages here? Thanks to the food. I think we'll be a little bit short, unfortunately. Hmm, it's a very close one. If I do go for Cottage Attack, I can still sack a food token on the way back, but we would be taking 14. I would essentially gain 6 between the lifelink and the food token, so it would be at 16. So I guess that's enough to survive. Alright, let's try and push some damage. Just double checking here, but yeah, I don't think we have enough. Now what I can do is activate Cottage on defense still. So that could help as our opponent falls to one. So yeah, with the food tokens I can pad my life total. Opponent up to two. Plays Goro Goro. That's another good one. Although they don't have the mana to make a dragon. Just Beast Caller attacking. So now we take 8. I have the mana to activate Double Cottage now. So if they don't have anything else, that might do it. So I don't want to sack a food token since I'll need those food tokens for mana. So let's untap. Go for the throat. Also a convenient answer. So now it's probably better to kill Kogla and Yidaro, unless we of course still think they might have a protection spell in hand. So in that case, double activate Cottage is going to be better. Alright, let's go for it. Make sure we tap our food. We 
We are dead to a removal spell. So an incredibly close game, and Double Cottage crosses the finish line onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Wormlet into Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Greta on three. And we'll be able to top that off with a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge as kind of our finisher. Opponent does have a cut down for Wormlet. That's going to slow us down. And turn to Underdog. So Greta into Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, and then we can play Welcome to Sweet Tooth using our food tokens for a very efficient turn four. Going with a pretty good curve here. One, two, three. Let's see if they can top it off with a Shieldred on four. Since we have a backup Greta, I don't really mind trading the first one for a Trespasser. Although having two creatures to put the counters onto could also be important if they have spot removal. Yeah, I think I still should offer the trade here. And if they feel inclined to kill a token, then they're not killing Greta. It's gonna be a Flash Gorger, 3-3, three, three, Menace and Lifelink. And we found a Teething Wormlet. I think we still stick to the plan, Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. And then I guess we can go Wormlet plus Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So that was a great turn. And I guess we'll hang back now. A bit too far behind on life totals. Wormlet does have Death Touch. Liliana can make us discard our last card, which is Greta. And we have some good blocks lined up. Archivist wasn't bad. So we can sacrifice our Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, giving our team a whopping plus four plus four here. I would like to pressure Liliana. This we can activate only as a sorcery. So for now, play Archivists, send 4-4 four, four token at Liliana. If they double block, we take out Flesh Gorger. If they minus, we've got a token to sacrifice. Yeah, that seems acceptable. Could also send the Wormlet, trade it for Underdog, but then the 4-4 four, four is going to connect, so maybe that's still worth it. And put on double blocks, so Flesh Gorger down. And Liliana takes two. You're gonna regret that. Next turn we'll get some more plus one counters. And then hopefully we'll find some enchantments to draw with the Archivist. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, I guess they're too far behind on board. Next turn, Knight of the Sweet's Revenge can pump our team and do some serious damage onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand could work out if we find some blue mana soon for Goose Mother, or if we find some other cheap enablers for Wormlet. Yeah, I'll try it. Turn one mountain, a red aggro. So Wormlet unlikely to survive, but if it does, it can be a nice source of life gain. Found our blue mana for Goose Mother, so can play one turn two and another turn three. 2-2 Goose Mother, not the best since it doesn't make an artifact for Wormlet. But just gotta make sure we don't fall behind on board. Swiss Spear is next. And oof, end of festivities. Killing my 1-1 one -one Wormlet is painful. Take three. Gonna take another one from our Yavimaya Coast. So we're definitely on the back foot here, on the draw against the Reds, with a very good start. Gumdrop Poisoner can be a nice draw in this matchup. Just a life linker. That can maybe take out a one toughness creature in the process if we have a Wormlet in play. Squeeze next. Yep, so just trade for Squee. Even though they might have another one. 
And then now I can play a Goose Mother for x equals 1. I don't know if I'll be able to attack to draw cards with a Goose Mother anytime soon. Opponent goes digging, finding a play with fire and a land. So Swift Spear is free to attack, and if I block one of the opponent's 1-1s, one they can finish off Goose Mother. So I'm kind of surprised they're firing off play with fire right now, but I guess they can push 5 damage. All right, time for Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. And then just keep our Goose Mother back on defense. Our opponent can potentially bring back Squee here. And a Phoenix Chick as well. So block Squee. Not dead yet, and we can of course start sacking food tokens to gain life. Welcome to Sweet Tooth was a fine draw. So play that, and then pass with two mana for food tokens. Can play a tap to Darkseid Shores, hang on to Abandoned Mire to maybe get back something from Graveyard later. I should probably just sack a food token now so we don't die to Burn Spell in response. Another Phoenix Chick. And an all-out attack. So block Swift Spear. Probably have to trade here, even though I would like to keep some creatures around. And then trading for the token makes it less likely that they'll get back Squee from the graveyard later. Alright, we're at one. Are we dead? Play with fire. Alright, close one here against red. Couldn't quite gain enough life. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Turn 1, Adventure Poisoner. Turn 2, probably Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Turn 3, Goose Mother, X equals 1. And then we can start drawing. Maybe wait to sacrifice a food token before playing Poisoner. Okay, now a tough cookie. Is that better? Does apply a bit more early pressure, although it does die to a cutdown. But so does the 1-1 one, one token. Kind of like the enchantment more here. Opponent does seem to have a removal spell. But cutdown could have answered our cookie as well. The only concern is her opponent killing Goose Mother and then not having any creatures to get the plus one counters. So cut down our 1-1. One, one. Opponent's blue-black, and underdog on two. Archivists is going to be great with Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So now I have to decide. Poisoner versus Goose Mother for one, I think. Upside of Tough Cookie is that it would survive a go for the throats, which they might also have. But it's not very mana efficient. So I think Goose Mother for one it is. Hope they don't kill it. And then hope to draw a lane so we can go Archivist plus another Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Our land is tapped. Goose Mother is 7 7, so it's not messing around. Step 1 attack. Opponent might flash in a Fairy Mastermind to draw if we sack a food token. I think that's acceptable. And we found the untapped land, so I can go Archivist plus Welcome to Sweet Tooth now. That also helps us play around a counter spell since we're double spelling here. And they might counter our enchantments. Make disappear. Okay. Going for a tough cookie here also would have been reasonable. Let's go to Shieldred, so that's gonna punish us for drawing extra cards. Go 
but we've got a huge goose mother on the loose. I've got a few ways we can sequence this turn. Don't have the mana to sack a food token and play Poisoner to kill Underdog. But um, maybe this turn go for Candy Trail, Scry before drawing with a Goose Mother, and then I can still play a Tough Cookie in a Cottage. And another Tough Cookie isn't bad. So I might keep that on top. I don't have to sacrifice a food token if I attack here, but I think it's reasonable. And then I can also animate Cottage next turn if that lines up better. With two blockers left, I'm unlikely to die. Plus, I can always sack a food token and upkeep to make sure I don't. And then now, can trade Cookie for Underdog. Since I can play another and also potentially animate a food token. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. Yeah, the Goose Mother is going to go the distance here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one can adventure the poisoner. Opponent on potentially red aggro. Now we can use this at instant speed, which could come up if we're trying to grow the archivist in the opponent's turn as well. But I think for mana efficiency's sake, I'm still gonna adventure on one. Opponent doesn't have a follow-up creature. So next, you could play Tough Cookie and then maybe wait on Archivist until we can play it in the same turn as Welcome to Sweet Tooth to get immediate value. And if Tough Cookie dies, it's not a disaster. Next turn, can play Poisoner, which is fine against a burn deck as just a 3-2 lifelink, even if it doesn't kill anything. And a Questing Druid, I see. So it's... A red-green. Opponent's got a few pump spells. Giant growth, pretty good with uh, Cacophony Scamp. I guess I could also just take it, and then they have the option of giant growth. Deal four, and then still sack Scamp to either kill Cookie or go face. Opponent deciding to start with the adventure. Finding Swift Spear. So, opponent's kind of forced to cast a giant growth before it goes away this turn. Yeah, maybe I do just take it, and then if they want a giant growth and kill my cookie, or just deal eight, that's fine. Opponent is going face, alright. So, playing our life linker here can help stem the bleeding, and then next turn we can double spell with Archivist, which is pretty nice. Cookie can attack. Yeah, the Questing Druid's much better if you can adventure it during the opponent's turn, because it's not quite like the other impulse draw effects that can wait until the next turn. Okay, opponent's got a Spell Spear with a mana up, so they could easily pump it up. So I don't have to play into it, I can just go Archivist plus Welcome to Sweet Tooth, or even double Archivists. Hope they don't have a 1 damage to all my creatures. And then next turn we get to go off. Kind of like that idea. Because we'll be able to play Wormlet into Welcome to Sweet Tooth. And if they have another giant growth, it feels kind of like a waste to attack into the Spell Spear. And our opponent's going to transform it. So 3-3 three, three, Trample, double Prowess. So giant growth does hurt now. Opponent passes. Okay, stick to the plan. Even picked up an untamed green source that doesn't cost me life. And then I can still go for the throat at instant speed. 
although there is a ward too, so that would be my entire turn if I decide to go for it. Which is still reasonable. Just clear the spell stalker before it does more damage, since their opponent can maybe one hit KO us. But if they have a protection spell instead, I think I still prefer this. Did not pick up another food source, unfortunately. So, can play another Archivist. Fall to six. Or I can pass with food and go for the throat available. Which is maybe safer. And so again, not gonna attack into the Spellstalker. Upside of playing Archivist is that it grows as we make food next turn. But we also have a Death Touch Wormlet that can maybe help. Spellstalker attacks. So let's say we block Wormlet's Poisoner, so I gain as much life as possible. And then hope that we're not dead to a combination of pump spells. Could also put a tough cookie in front. Which I probably don't need to win this game. And even a 1-1 human, honestly. Just make sure we don't die. Lightning Strike kills Poisoner, so we don't gain any life now. Now the problem with sacking a food is that Wormlet would lose Death Touch. Giant Growth. So that's 10, so they're not dead yet. So yeah, I think we let damage happen. Go to 1 and then I can sack food afterwards. We do trade thanks to Death Touch. So now do I sack the food? If our opponent's got a burn spell in response, I'll feel bad. So maybe I untap first. Get the food to grow Archivist. And then now I can safely sack food to get out of burn range. Alright, and then go Archivist plus Tough Cookie is one option. Although the Archivist in play have already picked up a counter for the turn. So maybe it's just Archivist, keep up, go for the throats. And next turn, Tough Cookie. Alright, so could have played that a little differently, maybe prioritize killing Spell Spear a little bit sooner. Turns out they didn't seem to have a protection spell in hand. Kick off on East Camp, still good with a pump spell potentially. And another Spell Spear. Alright, we'll take that out end of turn. Could wait until they transform, which is not unreasonable, but want to use my mana while I can, and it does seem like they have a protection spell in place. Tyvar stands, all right. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't cast it last turn. So plus one counters on smaller Archivist. And then now a tough cookie gives us a bunch more plus one counters. This is essentially a lethal attack. If I animate an extra food token, then they'll have to jump with both creatures, so that seems worth it. Just make sure we don't animate the summoning sick food. Attack all out. Keep Candy Trail to enable Archivist next turn. And yeah, unless our opponent's got two more burn spells, we should be alright. I guess a Lightning Strike could do it too. So hopefully that's not the case. And our opponent explodes. A very close one here against a red-green pump spell combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Archivist could be quite exciting with double welcome to Sweet Tooth if it survives, although that's uh, unlikely to happen against turn one swamp. But maybe we can focus their attention on the wormlets. Turn two underdog. Candy trails next. So wormlet plus adventure the poisoner. Don't need to scry just yet since lands are still welcome. And then hope to set up 
Archivist plus Welcome to Sweet Tooth in the same turn. Hopeless Nightmare makes me discard and probably let go of a Candy Trail, even though it is an artifact to grow Wormlets. Could maybe go Archivist plus Candy Trail next turn. Is it greedy to hang on to double Welcome to Sweet Tooth? Maybe. Nah, well, let's just discard a Candy Trail. Can still play Poisoner next turn at the very least. Alright, we've got a fourth land. So yeah, I think that means play Poisoner now. Even though it doesn't trigger Wormlets. And then next turn I can hopefully draw my card if her opponent's typed out. Opponent might have a cut down for Wormlets. Or now for Poisoner. So they would have been able to kill the Archivist in response to me playing the enchantment. Poisoner down. Okay. I think I prefer keeping the Wormlets long term. Underdog attacks. Opponent passes. Alright, that makes it a little bit awkward now. Because it could still kill Archivist in response to a Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Could attack to bait out the removal on Wormlets, but then I miss out on a plus one counter, which is one extra damage. So, yeah, tough choice. Could also welcome to Sweet Tooth and then play Archivist afterwards, and then they'll be more likely to kill the Wormlet, but um, not sure if that's quite worth it. So let's just go for it and cross our fingers. And then next turn, Cottage could also get busy. My opponent does actually cut down the Wormlets. Do they also have removal for Archivist? Looks like it. Well, <laughs> not much we could do here. So as the dust settles, we've got a Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Opponent's got an Underdog. And now Frex in Arena to try and pull ahead. Okay. Goose Mother was an excellent draw. So Welcome to Sweet Tooth, Goose Mother, X equals 1. And then next turn we'll get a ton of plus one counters to keep up the pressure while Goose Mother can draw. But if they've got a bunch more spot removal, they can uh, still pull ahead here with a Phyrexian Arena. Shieldred can punish that card draw. So we would get five plus one counters here if we make our food first. Which would be enough to get a human to attack past Shieldred, but we also have to be careful that we don't die on the way back. Although with a bunch of food to sacrifice, I don't think that's a major concern. So let's attack with Goose Mother and 6-6. Six, six. Find a Candy Trail. Could still play Candy Trail and then... Activate College to maybe block an underdog. Let's have Cookie, seems like a fine follow up. Could also sacrifice Candy Trail to play Tough Cookie right now. Seems a little sketchy, so let's just pass. I don't mind chumping Shieldred with a 1 1. Alright, they're not going to attack Underdog into the Restless Cottage. Could also line up a double block, kind of forcing them to answer Cottage or the 1 1, or at the very least to replay another Shieldred. That's maybe okay. Alright, trade happens, so I imagine they've got another shield right here. Liliana. Okay. Enough with the mysteries. If they've got another removal spell, that's gonna hurt. I think I gotta keep Goose Mother, get rid of the 6-6, and then Goose Mother can draw 
and get a bunch more plus one counters. Okay, that works. So play a tough cookie. Animate a food. And I can send both face and our opponent will be forced to jump if there's no interaction. I guess I do end up uh, having to discard what I draw to Liliana here, so maybe I shouldn't have sacrificed the food. Opponent's got six mana. They could sack a food token and still play Poisoner, killing Cookie. Alright, opponent just sacrificing Hopeless Nightmare. That's going to be good news for us. Keeps two on top. But can they survive? Doesn't look like it. And yeah, the Goose Mother goes the distance. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing black mana. Double Knight of the Sweet's Revenge is a bit much when we don't have a lot of lands. So I'll take a mulligan. This is much better. And then... Probably get rid of a candy trail, even though it can maybe help me find a relevant two drop. I would likely want to play Cottage on one. And uh, Poisoner gives us a play on turn three. Can keep up Go for the Throat as well as the Instant Speed Adventure on two. And then at the very least, we can adventure Poisoner and cast it on three, even if it doesn't kill anything. Opponent on the red aggro, turn one Kumano, always scary. So we'll have our work cut out for us. Might have to go for the throat on two, whatever creature they run out here. Flame Breather. Yeah, I'm fine just playing defense. And then next turn we can perhaps welcome to Sweet Tooth and Adventure Poisoner. Reckless Impulse finds Phoenix Jake Flame Breather, at least no third lane, that's good for us. And Archivist will want to double spell with Welcome to Sweet Tooth, perhaps. And what I don't mind is Archivist and then Instant Speed Poisoner. To maybe catch them off guard. If they try and take it out with a 2 damage burn spell here, for instance. Or if they tap out, we can ambush Etching of Kumano. Awesome. They did not see that coming. And now we get to double spell Knight of the Sweet's Revenge and Welcome to Sweet Tooth, which both grows Archivist and draws a card. Now only it triggers once each turn, so maybe we save a second Welcome to Sweet Tooth for next turn and just go for Wormlet here. Okay, we're definitely in the driver's seat. Opponent missing a line drop and playing into our trap. Another Impulse. Finds the land Flame Breather, but the damage has been done. Another go for the throat, so we'll start here. And by gaining one with the Wormlets, we could also potentially take out Phoenix Chick with Poisoner, although we haven't found an artifact yet this turn. So maybe I just uh, attack for four, keep up go for the throat. Maybe worth it to just kill Flame Breather, but they might have a scarier 4 drop. Right, opponent plays another Flame Breather. In that case, let's just go for the throw to first one. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, next turn we could potentially get in with a Cottage, or we could sack a food token, gain 3, play Poisoner, killing the other Flame Breather. 
And there we have it, we ranked up all the way through gold into platinum, and the deck's a lot of fun to play, feels like one of those mid-range decks that can adapt its game plan to what the opponent is doing, which is a great quality of any deck. We can be the beat down if we start out with a welcome to Sweet Tooth, maybe into a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge to threaten to pump the team and close out a game out of nowhere, but we can also play a grindier game with a card draw from Goose Mother and our Archivist, even Greta can draw a few extra cards, and then against the very aggressive burn strategies, we can play defense with our life linker as well, and then of course we can also start sacrificing food tokens to gain life, so that can help in those matchups. Now that doesn't mean that there won't be difficult matchups out there, thinking of a hard control deck packing farewell, that can be pretty brutal since it deals with creatures, artifacts, and enchantments all at once, so that makes it difficult to keep a foothold in the game, although at least we have a creature land now that can maybe keep up the pressure after board wipe, and then maybe the five color domain decks with Atraxa can also go over the top, so those will still be difficult matchups, but overall I've been pretty happy with this Sultai food deck, and it should also translate to best of three, where blue gives you access to a few counter spells to maybe counter those expensive six and seven mana spells that could otherwise threaten to take over. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.